morning, it's Thursday, August 13th, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Living in Harmony, and our scripture is Psalm 133. How wonderful and pleasant it is when brothers live together in harmony, for harmony is as precious as the anointing oil that was poured over Aaron's head, that ran down his beard and onto the border of his robe. Harmony is as refreshing as the dew from Mount Hermon that falls on the mountains of Zion. And there the Lord has pronounced his blessing, even life everlasting. Harmony is, according to the dictionary, the quality of forming a pleasant and consistent whole. Almost 40 years ago, music icons Paul McCartney and Stevie Wonder's music video lit up the charts in a plea for humanity to find a way to exist in harmony. The words are, Ebony and Ivory live together in perfect harmony, side by side on my piano keyboard, O oh Lord, why don't we? Both of these artists helped define the distinctives of the baby boomer generation, those who came along after World War II. In typical arrogance, fueled by youthful naivete, the boomers imagined we were the first to really get it right about how to have a perfect world. The concept of harmony, just getting along with each other, learning to love each other, worked well in theory. In practice, we didn't do so well. To wit, 2020. If the dictionary is right about harmony being a pleasing, consistent whole of divergent cacophonous parts, we're about as much in tune with each other in 2020 as sounds of a cat fight in the middle of the night. It's hard for me to point a finger at the current generation for the way they're proclaiming how to get it right in racial harmony, especially when my generation tried the same worn-out argument of protest, public blaming, exclusion, infighting, general unrest. Fighting fire with fire makes for a catchy soundbite, but it's a horrible methodology for bringing people to a point of respect and even love, much less the promised land of harmony. In the same way that light and the absence of light cannot exist in the same space, so harmony will never occupy the same space with anger. Several weeks ago, I preached a sermon on the text of Genesis 33, where estranged brothers Jacob and Esau reconciled after a 20-year feud. The reconciliation only happened because they both decided that the anger that fueled the rift was just not working. In fact, putting aside the anger was the only way dust could have enough chance to settle so the importance of their relationship would be seen. As a visual representation of the choices, I put together two doors, one marked anger and the other reconciliation. The tagline for the sermon was this, If you choose reconciliation, you must leave the anger behind. If you choose to remain angry, you will never reconcile with anyone. You just can't walk through two doors at the same time. For you today, let's go back to before this day's generation, or my generation, back before Black Lives Matter or Ku Klux Klan or anything in recent memory. Let's let wisdom from Solomon be our last word. Proverbs 15, verse 1. A gentle answer deflects anger, but harsh words make tempers flare. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.